Oh, you can see yourself. Oh, happy. This is our, this is episode 17, and we just found out that on the back of our cameras, the screens come out and we can flip them so we can see ourselves. And I know it's hard to explain <laughs> to the viewers, <laughs> but what we've been doing this whole time is I've had her go sit yeah. in this seat and I'll look at all the cameras and make sure she's angled correctly and all that stuff. But and I then still I'll have, can't see myself. But, but she still can't away. see herself. So she would come sit in this seat. And I'd do the same thing with all the cameras. And every time we move the cameras, we had to do it. And, we and just, then we yeah. would anxiously check the cameras that the episode makes sure they're recording. And make sure they're still recording. Yeah. And we just found out. We're 17 yeah. episodes in. We just found I out the it. cameras can go all the way and flip up. But this is hilarious. All right. Anyways. Let's start your time up. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Welcome to Soul Lab, a Christian-based podcast utilizing logic, history, science, and scripture to better understand the Christian faith. And now your hosts, Delaney and AJ. All right. Hello and welcome back to another podcast of Soul Lab. I'm your host, Delaney. And I'm AJ. And we're here to discuss giants, both biblical and mythological, right? Uh, yeah, so we're going to talk yeah. about, this is a study on giants. We're going to talk about where we find giants in scripture. We're going to talk about some archaeological discoveries of giants. We're going to talk about... I might uh, challenge archaeological discoveries. Interesting facts about giants that we find in the Bible. And yeah, kind of put that all together. We're going to put together, you know, science, a little bit of archaeology, so history, science, biblical, put all together and see what makes the most sense. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to do it in super comfortable clothes today. Yeah, because we're tired of wrestling up. Yeah. Okay, to start off, why don't you tell me a little bit about kind of what... You, oh, I'm actually going to do the same thing. I'm sorry. I just want to have a little sippy sip. Delaney made us some nice chai teas before we started today. Yes. Which is one of AJ's favorite things. Yes, and AJ just discovered what chai tea was. What, the spring? This year, I don't want to talk about it. Yeah. I'm kind of embarrassed <laughs> that I know what a chai but tea was. It's freaking delicious. I feel bad because I've always loved chai tea, but never introduced him to it, thinking he would think uh. it was kind of an odd drink. And one day he was like, I think I want to order a chai. And I was like, I think you'd actually like a chai. And yeah. here we are. Yeah, it was delicious. That was useless information. All right, let's talk about giants. All right, AJ, why don't you tell us a little bit about what giants are and who they are. Yes. And a little bit about what you know. So to clarify, because when we say the word giant, some people think of this three-story creature that you see in movies and stuff. And what we're specifically talking about when we use the word giant is actual human beings, these humans that were that we seem to have evidence of that we're alive. They're also recorded in scripture that are drastically above average height. They're um, like nine feet. So we're idea. talking like nine foot on average. Yeah, Nine yeah. foot compared to a modern day human. Because yeah. there's also people who are like, you know, six, eight. And like I have a friend who's six, eight. But if you're talking to humans, like what's the average human size? Five, ten? Now I think it's a five. No, it's not even that. It's like five, seven, five, eight. It says the average height for an American man is five, nine. That's what I just, I said five, ten. I was close. This says 5'8". I'm getting a lot of different sources here. But anyway, so when we say giants, we're talking about these humans that have been found that we believe to be true in Scripture that are somewhere around 9 feet in height, which also, we'll talk about this later, that seems to be how they're described in Scripture as well. Of course, they didn't use feet as measurement. but So we're not talking like, we're talking like, yeah, yeah. And sorry, I was running through. I was reading. <laughs> okay. Switching to the Bible first. Okay. okay. Why don't we Let's start with the it. Bible then? Yeah. Why don't you tell me a little bit about those, the giants found in Scripture and kind of where those yeah. are. Let's talk about. I know about Goliath. That's my friend. Yes. I love the story of Goliath. And he was from a, a land where lots of giants were. Am I right? I don't know. I don't think it was as common. Okay. Because he was so feared that it, and it seems like, and at the time it's not as, he's so feared and his, it's made such a big deal that he is a giant. I don't think it was as common. I think he said that he was from the clan of da-da-da-da, which was giants. He was, I believe, from a clan of, of that where it was common for okay. them to have giants. That's what I'm but thinking that, of. But like, giants themselves, even back in like biblical times, right. weren't as common. They were like yeah. to tell people. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah pretty much. <laughs> let's look at the Old Testament. Let's look at words that in the original text, in the Hebrew text, that were used that were that meant giant, right? Okay. So do you know this yet? So the first one that we're gonna see is gonna be in in the Old Testament. So Nephilim. So all the way back to the book of Genesis. And specifically, I think it's Genesis six, four. Yeah, we actually read we actually read this verse in our last podcast episode, which we did about which we did on Neanderthals and evolution. And we talked about this exact passage because it talks about some of the ancient like angels and humans that were around during the time okay. of right before the flood. Yeah. <clears throat> this is as man is becoming more and more sinful, but basically it talks about the Nephilim. Okay. And the word that's 
Nephilim, depending on what translation you're using, a lot of translations will actually not use the word Nephilim. They'll use giant. They'll just translate it straight to giant. I think an IV does that. ESV does not. ESV retains the original word Nephilim, but it's understood. Most theologians agree like that is that means giant. Anytime you see Nephilim throughout the Old Testament. And Numbers 13.33. So we're in the Torah. First five books of the Bible written by Moses and Genesis. What is it? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. So it's the fourth book. Yeah, and then Deuteronomy. But Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and occupy it, for we are well able to overcome it. Then the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we are. So they brought the people of Israel a bad report of the land that they had spied out, saying, The land, though which we have gone to spy it out, is a land that devours its inhabitants. Ooh, scary. And all the people that we saw in it are a great height. And there we saw the Nephilim, the sons of Anak, who were from, is an Anak descendant of Cain? The tribe of Anak is a tribe that has housed giants. I don't know if okay. he's from Cain. Yeah, That's scary. So you have first Genesis 6-4 talking about the Nephilim, but then you have Numbers thirteen thirty three, which you just read, which specifically says that the Nephilim are giants. That makes sense. Yeah. Yep. And because we hear people ask all the time, like they've heard the word Nephilim, but they don't know what it is. The Nephilim are obviously giants, according to that scripture. Did you figure out where the tribe's from? Uh, it Connick. descends from Anak, who descends from Arba. But we don't know much about Arba, so we can't tell if he's a descendant of Yeah, Kine. But we know the Nephilim are giants. We know that. And yeah. we know we understand that there's tribes of them, right? So now we're going to get to, so that's not the only word that's used to reference giants. Oh, we also cool. have the Rapha. A Raphaim is the, is the two different words. I think Raphaim is the plural. Okay. Um, Hebrew word, and they're mentioned in several passages, including Deuteronomy 2.11, Deuteronomy 3.11, Joshua 12.4, and it's a specific group of giants once again, but we're going to read 2 Samuel just for fun, okay. which is second, if you want to read it, Yep. 2 Samuel 21, oh, my phone is 22. Like, phone's acting like a fool. 2 Samuel 21, 22. These four were the descendants from the giants, and they fell by the hand of David in the hands of the servants. So this is ESV, and it uses the word giants. Yeah. The word, so the reason I wanted to use that is that, so the most translations just use the word giant there. If, but if you look at, if you were to use like your blue letter Bible, and if you were to pull up the original Hebrew that's used, it actually says it's a Raphaim or gotcha. Rapha. Gotcha. And, but it, every translation just translates it straight to giants. So I'm using that as, because it's a perfect example of uh, that it's that the theologians at the time as well as today agree that these are two common words that are used to reference giants cool because i've heard some people say oh were there really giants in scripture yes it's absolutely point blank talking about giant these giant human beings all right cool so switching things up just a little bit there's many passages throughout scripture where there's different groups of giants that are mentioned so we talked about genesis 6 about the nephilim which are described as giants or mighty men of great size and great strength and then we read numbers so numbers, the, the specific group of, I think it was Nephilim, like I used that word, right? When you read numbers earlier, yeah. 1333. However, the group is called the Anakim. Okay. So that's the, there's that's different like, groups of giants. I just read that's because Anak, Anak was their, was the father. Yes, they're descendants the, of Anak. Yeah. Yeah. So they're known as the descendants of Anak or Anak or however you say it. They said they seemed, we seemed like grasshoppers in their eyes. Yeah. Deuteronomy. Let me see. I'm going to scroll up. So we talked about Deuteronomy, the Raphaim, and the Zamzumim. I know I'm saying that wrong. They're groups of giants mentioned in relation to ancient inhabitants of the land. So in Deuteronomy, you have the Imim, also another group mentioned in Deuteronomy. Og, the king of Bashan. So the last mentioned giant, uh, the last mentioned Raphaim is actually Og, O-G, Og, who's the king of Bashan. And he was a giant. He's described as being made of iron. Which is obviously not literal, but meaning he's just a very strong, stout individual. But also that he was thirteen point, let me see, five feet long, tall, thirteen point five feet tall, and six feet wide, is how he's described. Wow. Is that literal, or is that what do you think? Is that literal? Is that a? I don't, when they get measurements like that, I always think it's literal just because of the measurements. Yeah. Now I will say to clarify, this is in cubics. I have now, it's been, tra yeah. I, I didn't, others have translated that to feet. Is it, did you do it in? Egyptian cubics. Good job. Yeah. It was written by... Yeah, for, thank you. For those that don't know, yeah. this, the book was, this, the book was written by Moses. 
Moses was trained on Egyptian cubics because yeah. he lived in Egypt. So you did Egypt. it. You did it on Egyptian cubics. Well, yes, yeah, I was yeah, gonna yeah. say because that's a with, common. Yeah, Noah's Ark. Yeah, go ahead and yeah, Noah's Ark. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are like, oh, you know, it was this big, and people are like, oh, it's this big, and people are like, oh, I found it. That's the wrong size. It was on an Egyptian cubic. So when you translate Hebrew, wow, the tongue twister, Hebrew cubits for like Noah's Ark or giants, it's not going to be the right size. So Correct. Egyptian cubics. That's what Moses was training because yeah. he was Hebrew by blood, mm -hmm. Egyptian by raving. And it's not that big of a deal on smaller numbers. I'm trying to think. It's probably, it's like a third of a foot off between the two. Yeah. But the difference matters. It doesn't matter as much in this situation, but with the Ark, it mattered because yeah. you're talking about hundreds of cubics right. of length, right? It's like, you know, so quite often. I don't remember the length. It was like, it's just hundreds of cubics. But then it makes the diff the length diff quite different. So. Right. So. Anyways, the quick king of Bashan. So that's um, an Egyptian cubit. I'd love for you. I believe it to be. Awesome. I'm pretty okay. sure. Do you want to read Deuteronomy 3.11 for me? Yes. Because it's about Og, the king of Bashan, which I think is cool. 3.11. The last. He's the last of the Raphaim. For only Og, the king of Basham, was left of the Revman of the Rephaim. It's a Rephaim? Rephaim is how I've been saying it, but I don't know if that's right. Rephaim. Sounds right. Rephaim? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It sounds cool how I was saying it, so I'm going to keep saying it that way. Behold, his bed was a bed of iron. Is it not Rabbath of the Ananites? Nine cubits was its length, mm. and four cubits its breadth, the Egyptian cubits, according to the common cubit. Which translates to about 13 and a half feet tall and six feet wide. Yes. Yeah. Now, <laughs> it says he had a bed of iron. Uh, I don't know if that's literal or not, but I've heard that people back then often slept on like hard, like stone. Mm -hmm. And I've heard of people nowadays doing that. It's like super good for you. I, so I think I'd be curious to do a study on that, but I have heard that. I've heard that some people did some tests and studies where they slept on hard stone and they'll have that in their houses yeah. now, like beds yeah. made of stone. At first it's like and horrible. At first it's horrible, but then once you adapt to it, mm -hmm. it's actually incredibly comfortable. Yeah. Which I think is interesting. And that's good for your spine. Let's see. All right. And then switching to Goliath. Okay. Yeah. The one you want to talk about. These are all, it's interesting. These are all giants we've mentioned so far, different groups, different peoples. The first named giant before Goliath, right? Is it? Most people, when you say, hey, name a giant, they name Goliath. Goliath and yeah. if you were to say, hey, is he the only named giant? They're like, no, that's the only one I know of. Og is the first named one. Okay. okay. The king. However, the last of the Raphael. However, Goliath is definitely the most known, more so because of the story, right? The famous story. I wonder why that he died out. Og's line. I don't know. That's a good question. Goliath. Da, 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 da. Just a reminder, Goliath, Philistine warrior. He was their biggest warrior. And he's described as nine feet tall, wearing heavy armor and a massive spear. And it was a common thing in battle back then. I'm summarizing the story. Common thing in battle back then that they would do single combat instead of killing an entire army. He comes out and he's like, oh, yeah, he's like who will challenge me? And no one would challenge no one would do him. it. And then David comes forward. David was there to deliver pizza to his pizza. brother. That's, I don't I know what he was actually. I think he was delivering food. But in Veggie Tales, it was pizzas. That's hilarious. Yeah, that's how I remember I mean, it. I don't remember that episode. Really? It's funny. Oh, it was the best episode. Deliver and pizza. <laughs> Goliath was a pickle. And yeah. Larry, who is David. My goodness. I can't remember their actual yeah, name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. David comes forward from the army. He he hears Goliath bad mouthing God. Yeah. And he says, that, how are you going to allow that this? That makes him mad. And he snaps. He's like, and he's, that's not okay. Yeah. So David goes out, gets some rocks. Puts them in his bag. I think mm -hmm. smooth stones specifically. Smooth stones. And yeah. then chucks them at Goliath. And I read the a sling. scientific thing. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'm horrible at summarizing. Puts them in a sling and then slings around his head and hits him. Yeah. I read a study one time that talked about how the something about how like a certain speed of a rock hitting a certain part of your head can instantly kill you. Absolutely. But Goliath fell over dead and they chopped his head off. David didn't. Yeah, yeah, David chopped his head off. And David, though, mm -hmm. may like very, very much a pro proclaimed that God was going to win the battle, which was like the big yeah. thing. But you know what? Mm -hmm. Oh, are you done? I have so much yeah. cool stuff to say on this Hit subject. Yeah. So here's the really cool thing about the David and Goliath story is most people, especially me when I was a child in Sunday school, you hear that story and you think, oh, my goodness, God can help me defeat any Goliath in life. He can help right. me. He can help me overcome any battle. And with the true story there. So here's some things that most theologians agree now that we have more evidence, but is that Goliath actually had horrible vision. So it says in the, in the story that Goliath had to be led down to the fighting location, which is not common back then. Mm. Back then, it was actually a disgrace for you to have someone walk with you. You would walk alone out to the open field and you would fight one-on-one -on -one battle. He was, had to be led. Like sparring. And so it's believed that he actually had bad vision and couldn't see very far. Second thing of information 
is that David was an incredibly well-trained marksman with slingshots. He had killed, yeah. I think, multiple animals, large animals. Shepherd. He was very well-trained with defending his flock and killing large beasts yeah. at range with this, with these. <clears throat> and he had that going for him. So you have that, his experience is training with the sling, mixed match with a guy who can't even see him from far distance. David actually was the more likely person to win the battle from the beginning, drastically more likely to win the battle. And but the thing that we actually should take away from it is that trust God in all circumstances and know he has a plan because David didn't know that going into the battle. All right. he knew is here's this big tough guy that's probably going to kill me, but I'm a, I can't let him disrespect my God. What he didn't know is that God had been preparing him his whole life for that moment, right. training him with that weapon. And then his opponent was going to be the perfect opponent for him, somebody who couldn't see it far distance. And somebody and so, who looked... So when it came down, it shone well on it sh David. It shined to God. Like yeah. That too. But David looked like good. It wasn't like he just took well, anybody. I was like, oh my yeah. goodness. Like he proclaimed the name of the Lord and then took out a giant. But it's the cool thing is like, it's if we want to think, yeah, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, strengthens me, right? Philippians 4.13. That's great to think that way. However, the story of David and Goliath is not, I don't think is that. It's the story that of different. that you should have faith in God and know God has a plan and that you should trust that genuinely God has a plan. And you should know that God is this in infinite IQ being with a strategy. He's going to prepare you for the battles he sends you to as long as you're steadfast and following what God calls you to do. Because mm -hmm. God literally set David up for success. He trained him with that martial weapon, made him incredibly expert on it, then put him against an opponent that at sight, if you were to look and see, you'd be like, mm, I'd be betting on Goliath. But really, if you have all the facts, David was more likely to win that battle. And he did. So anyways, I just think that's a really cool, like different view on the David and Goliath story. Very nice. Yeah. All right. What else you got? I feel like I rambled off on that no, one. No, it was great. I liked it. Did you know that Philippians 4.13 is also a drastically misunderstood verse? It's no, I didn't know that. We'll do it another day when we're not. Yeah, we're not short on time. Pushing our deadline. Yeah, yes. We, yeah. We got places to be. Yeah. All right. So I got, I just spoke about Goliath. Next is other giants in the Philistines. So Goliath was a Philistine, right? But there are other giants mentioned in the Philistines. So there's three passages mentioned, several other giants named, one is named Ishbi Banab and Lami, who are also related to Goliath and were noted for their great size and great strength. And this is mentioned throughout 2 Samuel 21, 15, 1 Chronicles 24. So the last one, this last one is uh, in Amos, Amos 2, 9, the Amorites. So the prophet Amos is referring to the Amorites, describing them as tall as cedars strong as oaks and so basically the we the last mention we have of giants in the old testament is the amorites and i don't to my knowledge i don't think there's any mention of giants in the new testament i don't think so you, you there's goliath's sword mentioned at one point that's it Goliath's sword. no that's old testament sorry yeah you know, i don't think there's any mention of giants in the new testament that's a history of where we see them throughout the Old Testament. Anything on that subject? No, that's really interesting. I like it. Archaeological discoveries of giants. What you know about that? I have a few. I had a bunch, and then I went on a deeper dive and discovered a bunch of them have been proven as false. And so I eliminated those from my results. So yes, I found a lot of There was a lot. There was like a- Arizona had a huge yeah, finding, and that wasn't real. Huge finding. Yeah, there yeah. was a massive outbreak of false giant stories- around, I think it was the 1800s, I think it was the 1800s, throughout the world. So I could only find two giants in my research that I believed were accurate and true that archaeologically I think are trustworthy because there was a lot that I think were faked, yeah, proven to be fake. Yeah, me too. I, I, yeah. like I had the whole thing. I'm like, oh, this one. And then I was like going deeper. Yeah. I was like, never mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, oh, I think that one's not yeah. Yeah, reputable. Or there's some where they were like called giants, but they're maybe only six foot eight. Yeah. I'm like, is that really a giant? Yeah. That was mine. I know. Delaney's I found one. I'm like six foot I eight. I'm like, I don't, know, was like, I don't know if that's a giant. I think because yeah. it was compared to people, the people around that. Maybe the people around that time were shorter and they were and like, around that this time is giant. Area, the, the people were like, I think five, four is that or something, or something like that. It's funny. The guy that's but... five, seven is saying six, eight's not giant. But <laughs> it's tall to okay. me. All right. Here's the first one I got. The love lock. Let me see. The love lock giants in America. Okay. Okay. Specifically Nevada. So here's what we got. 1911 is when we see the Lovelock Giants. Miners are digging for fertilizer in caves that were discovered. And as they're digging, uh, they found multiple things indicating that there were some, there were these giant humans there. For starters, they found sandals that had been uh, preserved. 
that were of massive size. I think they were. Okay, I saw this theory. Yeah. And I have a conspiracy theory when you finish. Let's do it. So they have a, they were like 15 inch, I think, sandals. And, you know, just we can take basic math on the length of a foot and say, okay, based on that, how tall was the person? They had mummified remains, though, which helped more. So they're actually mummified giants. And they had handprints that had been embedded into different boulders. And so what they could do is they can take just the footprint and they can say, based on the length of this foot, size footprint. So they can take the sandals and they can say, the length, based on the length of the sandal, this person is probably about was nine feet tall. And they can look at the handprint and say, that also correlates with nine feet tall. But then they found the mummified remains and they're like, that's a nine foot. They can look at all the bones and they be like, yeah, nine, it's a nine foot skeleton. And the averages were eight to 10 feet tall humans. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. What's your first okay. thing about that? So. This is a conspiracy theory. Okay, so everybody buckle up. This is just conspiracy. Okay, so we don't like that. Skip ahead about 20 seconds. Hmm. But there's a theory. Okay, so when they discovered these folks. The Lovelock Giants. Yes. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it was these folks I was reading about. They went to the Miss Smithsonian, which is a museum. Okay. To be, like, preserved. Okay. So then there was, like, at some point in time, a lot of giants that were found went to the Smithsonian. Like, they're at, like, the remains. Okay. And then people were like, hey, let's look at this evidence. And like, oh, well, we don't know where it is anymore. That's kind of weird. Like, where is it? Got lost. Yeah, got lost. Huh. So then, or got destroyed in our uh, storage container. It was just kind of weird stuff like that. And then, at some point in time, an act came forward, um, like a legal thing, saying that any kind of Native American tribe, tribal evidence that had been, like, disrupted, like, graveyards, anything like that, need to be returned to the land it was taken from mm. out of reverence for their ancestors, right? Mm. And in the act, though, according to the conspiracy theory, I haven't looked at the act, the conspiracy theory says the, Smith the, the Smithsonian was exempt from having to do that. So they didn't have to return their bones. So they got to claim, hey, we found these, but they never showed them, they never displayed them, them. Yeah. and then they never had to return them. Right. So you're just saying the theory, is the theory that this actually happened that they actually got giant yes. bones and they still have them today so let me wrap up okay so the theory being that mm -hmm. the smithsonian receives these as a gift from the excavators loses them and doesn't return them when it comes time to return return them because they're exempt and then because well, they lost them yeah. the theory is that's because that there's a giant like cover-up because the united states government doesn't want you to know that giants existed uh, that's oh, the conspiracy interesting theory. yeah Okay. I learned that researching. I didn't put it in my notes. Apparently, we're sharing. I didn't yeah. put it in my notes. I thought it was a little out there, but it's kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. All right. So that's my first one. That's the one that I think has the most reputable evidence. If you go research this, you're going to find tons of articles on it. You're going to find that it wasn't just like they found one thing and they thought it was giants. They found multiple things in the caves that yeah. indicated this. It seemed like it was a community of them as well. So that's the first one. The second one, which I think has enough substantial evidence. And we talk about this, we talk about this a little bit in our episode on Noah's Ark, which we did a long time ago now. It feels like a long time ago. It was but six months ago. Six months ago, probably. But Noah's wife, her sarcophagus yes. was found. So the theory, know. too, is that humans in the theory, humans in general were larger prior to the flood due to higher oxygen levels being below the atmosphere. That's a theory. Yeah, just in general. However, Nephilim means giant, and that was included during that time. So even though humans were above average height, there were still giants. So the theory is that there's higher levels of oxygen caused people to be bigger. Yeah. So the theory would be that giants would be even bigger than nine feet then, and that mm -hmm. Noah's wife was not a giant for her time. She's a giant for our time. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Theory. Maybe. Yeah. So on Noah's wife, so 1980s is when Ron White discovered most of his, his archaeological findings around like 1980s. I think it was like 1980s to 1990. And he, there's many things that he claims that he discovered. We talk about Noah's Ark in a full episode where you know we feel convicted that he really did find it. Um, up to you guys to figure that out, you know, see if you believe that. There's lots of other things which we'll talk about another time. But one of the things he found during the Noah Ark discovery is he found the town that Noah would have lived in with his family, right? And then he found grave sites outside of it. So, yes, he found, first he found the Waystones from the Ark that had markings on them. Yes. And those markings yeah. were eight, like, slashes. Have eight slashes for eight yeah. people or eight people depicted. Yeah. And the gravestone of this particular grave talking about it had eight people. And I think it yes. had a specification about a certain one of them that did it. Like, it had, like, her circled. I don't know. I think it's dead. Yeah. I could be wrong. That I don't yeah. remember. But, so, Ron Wyatt, let me see. Da, 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 da. So, it was 15 feet tall. So, here's the issue with this whole thing. 
So it was found by Ron Wyatt and a group of, I think, excavators that were with him at the time. This is in Durapinar, Turkey, where it's believed the family lived. The sarcophagus was 15 feet tall. So back to Delaney's point, like Goliath was nine feet tall, which is still considered a giant. However, maybe pre-flood, giants were even larger back then. So That's my theory, feet. because if everything was larger, if it was, then sure. the oxygen, humans would be, giants would be. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Here's the thing that like kind of freaks people out about this whole, or I shouldn't say, here's the thing that discourages people from believing this to be true, is that after he found this, treasure hunters show up and they steal, they steal the sarcophagus, they steal the body. So unfortunately, it's even though I think there's pictures of it and I think there's multiple witnesses of it, it was stolen. And there was However, things in the coffin too, right? Like clothing or I hair or something. Okay. Yeah, I don't know that. However, they were able to find more of her remains. I guess they weren't able to steal all of it. So there actually are some of Noah's wife's skeleton found, and they were able to use that also to estimate afterwards the average height of the human, right? Because you can take you know a femur and you can say, hey, based on the size of the femur, I can say how tall this person was. And it added up to 15. It seems like it's about 15 feet. So we do have that. We just don't have the whole sarcophagus and all the remains anymore. So some people say, how, what a convenience that mm -hmm. it got stolen, and it's, but we still have some of the bones. And like I said, there were multiple witnesses. And so it's believed that somebody somewhere has Noah's wife's uh, sarcophagus and her bones and her body, and that it was sold by treasure hunters on the black market. So not sure how much that goes for. I'm sure quite a bit, but a giant's bones sitting in someone's house right now. So, you got anything to add to that? Cool. I love that story. I like, uh, I used to be very interested in anthropology, especially in like forensics. I love like bones and stuff like that. It just fascinates me. I don't know why. That's really cool. Yeah. All right. Here's the next question. So if we, in the Old Testament, we have records of giants, okay? We claim maybe we even found some archaeological discoveries of them. Why are there so few and why aren't they here anymore? Are they here anymore? I don't know. Why aren't? There's sightings all around the world of giants. The theory is sometimes people theorize that the giants are still here that are hiding. Giant humans? Why, why is it, why is it common? Like why, yeah, like why, why are we is, finding, why don't, if, that, if what you say is true, like why don't why, we have more, why don't we have more bones and remains? I'm and, not sure if that's true. Yeah. I, I don't believe it to be true, but mm -hmm. it's interesting. But there were giants. There were we're giants. We're saying that there were. Biblically, we see that there are. It and, seems like that's true. So why aren't there, first well, off, why aren't there more? And why, where did they go? Occasionally, yeah. you'll see someone who's like record tall. The tallest man on earth in 2024 is Sultan Kusan from Turkey, and he is eight feet and three inches, eight feet and 2.8 inches. But he's not the tallest modern human. I want to say it's from like the 19, 1800s. Feet. Robert Wadlow, 811, was 1918 was his year. 1900s, 1918. Okay. Yeah, and he eight was feet, eight feet, 11 inches. Nine almost feet. nine feet. So... The here's the thing: if giants did exist, and we believe that they did, they probably intermingled with non-giants, right? Average size humans. So I think that DNA is spread out probably, and there's probably people that in our time that still have it. And I think that's evidence in people like that who all of a sudden you have this massively tall human being, like you just said. Even today, like today, 2024, there's somebody who you said is almost eight feet tall, is the tallest current human being, and so that DNA is still there. However, why is it not more common? So we talk about this in a few episodes, but it's believed that, so this, this is AJ's belief on why, why after Old Testament, all of a sudden do we, after, after Raphaim, the Og, the last of the Raphaim, why is all of a sudden there's like a huge drop off or why does it seem like you have the Nephilim in pre-flood and all of a sudden after that, they're not discussed about as much, right? Mm -hmm. So AJ's theory is that, I think Delaney believes this too, correct me if I'm wrong, but we both have the same theory that back pre-flood, that there was a water vapor layer around the earth, which protected the earth from harmful UV radiation, increased oxygen quality. And because of that, certain creatures could live that were larger um, because we know like dinosaurs, as an example, needed higher quality oxygen and for them to sustain their massive size. But also uh, the UV radiation wouldn't have had them last, live as long. Anyways. It's believed that most likely post flood, when that layer is no longer there, they could no longer, it wasn't as sustainable an environment for a larger human being. And because of that, they started to die off and it was less and less likely that you would see them, which is why now we get to today, where like the last, in the last few hundred years, there's only been, I think he's the only one that's reached like close to nine feet in the last few hundred years. As if you, like I said, if you go back to Old Testament, there are entire tribes of giants. So that's just AJ's theory. You got anything on that? No. Cool. 
You know any interesting facts about giants? Okay. What else you got? Anyway, all right, across history, because we talked in our dragons episode, which I think was like episode one or two. Oh, yeah, that was early yeah. on. We talked about how dra dra dragons are reported in different cultures and different... Yeah, it's interesting how every civilization has a dragon story yeah. in that same way. Yeah, so they different... have a giant story, right? Yes. They're going with this? That's yeah. where I was going, yes. Yeah. Every culture hmm. around the world has a story about a dragon. I mean, not every culture. Most cultures. Yeah. A lot of cultures around the world have a story about dragons. Same, same with giants. We have a lot of different places where they're recorded. Greek yeah. mythology talks about the titans and the gigantus, which I guess is... Gig which, gigantus. Maybe it's not Gigantus is... I could be wrong. How but we would say, but Gigantus probably how you I think it's Gigantus. It. Gigantus, maybe? There's also, I think, Gigantus. an idiom, and idiom band. Really? Yeah. There's Norse mythology that talks about giants. Biblical traditions, we know that. We just talked about that. Celtic mm -hmm. mythology. Native American, you went into a little bit about Nevada, which I... Was that Native American, I imagine? I don't know. Okay. Hindu. Chinese. You're saying these are all the cultures that have a giant story. Okay. Polynesian. African and South America. All right. Interesting facts. Here's the first one. The ambiguity of the Nephilim. So this is a highly debated topic, but we only understand that Nephilim means giant. We get that. However, there's a pretext to that. And the pretext is God says that the sons of, oh my gosh, the sons of man, how does he word it? Sons of God, sorry. The sons of God, which is a phrase that means angels. It says the sons of God laid with the daughters of man, which just means humans. And then it doesn't say that means that the Nephilim came from that. But then the very next verse is Nephilim, talking about the Nephilim. And so a highly debated topic, this is kind of like an interesting fact, is were, did we first get giants from angels lying with humans? Lying means having we can't put that in relations the, with. Yeah, we can't put that in the episode. That's Damn it, you're so I think adults will understand. Okay. So the highly debated topic is, First off, are Nephilim just giants or did they actually become into existence because angels lied with humans? I think they did. I don't, if you read the, personally, I believe that because if you read the verses, they seem to be, it's written in a poetic way where it, it looks like they go together. And so it doesn't seem separate. It seems like this, the God is saying angels lied with humans and therefore we have giants. Is so how it seems poetically to the be The angels lay with the humans and created giants. Is yeah. what, okay. But some people believe that's not true, that God's just, those are two different sentences. So okay. highly debated topic, but yeah. interesting. But that's just like a little information. It's, it's interesting because that's where it's, I think most people, or I should say a lot of theologians believe that's how he got even giants. It was like, that wasn't something that God intentionally created from the beginning. It wasn't like one of his creatures. He was like, hey, I'm going to make a giant human being. He made angels, he made humans. And then that created giants in the same way, like we interbreed animals and creates other animals. You know what I mean? Interbreed dogs and get another dog breed. Fascinating. Here's an interesting fact. Giant, giants are constantly used, it looks by God, to encourage people to overcome fear. Obviously, David and Goliath story, very famous one. Yeah, I saw this where it's like, is it literally a giant or is it a metaphor for fear? I saw this in my research. I think it's literally they are giant human beings. Yeah, but, yeah. I, I'm, that's but I it's too. interesting how it does seem like God uses them to almost like test people to test their faith. Because if we look at not just David and Goliath, where David had to overcome a huge fear there, you look at like fear among the Israelites. So when the Israelites were scouting Canaan, Canaan, sorry, when the Israelites were scouting Canaan, they were reporting John giants, descendants of Anak, and they were even reported that the giants would view them as like grasshoppers because how big that they were. And they had to over, they still had to, it led to deep fear and doubt among the Israelites, preventing them from immediately entering the land that God had promised them. It was something that they had to overcome was that fear. And so it seems like a test of faith or a constant symbolization of overcoming fear is that's how giants are used by God in that, as a tool in that way. And then da, 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 throughout scripture, giants are constantly referred to as champions, which makes sense because they're above average size humans. So you see a lot of times like David and Goliath story, once again, where Goliath is their champion. He's the Philistine, right? Yeah. Yeah. Goliath is the Philistine champion. And you see that very commonly where it's always a giant, which makes sense, who is their war, their main warrior or their champion. Another interesting thing is that not only are giants used as uh, a symbolization of overcoming fear, but they're used as a sign of God's power. So once again, Og, who was defeated, the king of Bashan, was defeated by Moses and the Israelites, and it's just a demonstration of God's power. Also, once again, David and Goliath, mm -hmm. that God uses them as told to demonstrate his power. Okay. Yeah, I will say, like, back to your point, some people believe that the giants that are referenced are not literal 
giants and that it's a metaphor or hyperbole that's used in the poetic writing of the text. Um, and so that's up to like, I guess, us to discern. Interpret- but- yeah. I mean, it's interesting regardless. I think so. Yeah. All right. What do we talk about? We talked about what giants are. We talked about where we find them in scripture, where we find them archaeologically, like in the history of our world. We talked about some interesting facts about them. We talked about the David and Goliath story and like the un, the uh, other side of interpreting that. What else you got? I think that was all we talked about. It was interesting. Yeah, like, it was we, cool. we talked a little bit about conspiracy study. theories, which was, you know, it's a little, a little recess for you. Yeah. <laughs> conspiracy it, theory. Yeah. Sometimes we do topics on like, Things that are either controversial. Sometimes we do topics on things that are just like hard to understand or confusing. Sometimes we do topics like this where it's just like, hey, let's just learn more about giants yeah. together. So if you want to kind of explore with us in regards to ancient mysteries and questions about the Bible that we're kind of trying to explore, feel free to subscribe on YouTube, any platform with a podcast, and uh, find us on Instagram, Facebook. All that fun stuff, yeah. TikTok, all of it. And we've been your host, Delaney. And AJ. And this has been SoLab. We'll see you guys next time. Peace out. Thank you for listening to another episode of Soul Lab with AJ and Delaney. You can find all materials referenced from today's episodes in the show notes. If you enjoyed today's episode, please like, comment, and subscribe. Check out our website for more episodes and stay tuned for the next release. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>